Peace, family. It's your boy, Gerald. It is a little bit after, almost 10 after 8 o'clock. In about two hours, I have an appointment. And based off of, I'm sitting in my favorite spot. Based off of the outcome of that appointment will pretty much be the hallmark of the direction of how I take my life, how I go forth. First of all, how you doing? Doing okay? I hope that your health is priority and I hope that your mental state is stable peace be on to you now I had been waiting to I'd actually decided I was like well when I want to you know me I've what you see is what you get. Um, this transition uh, to Hawaii has been not only a spiritual test, it has been an economic test. Um, it's been a social test. And, you know, after a while, things that you willfully do all things that you do, you must be accountable for. So, I can only be one way and that's real. So, um, for those who have been following me, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, since day one, you know who you are. For those who may have, I guess they call it a cross watch, and stumbled across this channel that I've had for, since 2011, October, um, Thank you. Because you could be anywhere you would. It's your time. Your time is your most precious commodity. It is priceless. And that's why it's so important, family, that time management is important. So, um... Let me get myself together. So in two hours, I have a medical appointment. Um, for those who have been following me, um, you remember New Year's Eve. Um, everybody remembers where they were. Uh, Everybody remembers where they were New Year's. You know, a lot of people had a lot of epiphanies occur due to the buildup of that festive moment because it's a mark of time. Um, for myself, it was very it was very eventful too because. On that day, it landed me in the emergency room, and it didn't look good for me at all. Could have died. Because it was diagnosed at that moment, or 
the following day, because I came back the following day, that after running MRIs, running CAT scans, running the EK, EKGs, that I have a cardiovascular issue with my heart. I have a an enlarged, I have an aneurysm in my heart. And what landed me there was the fact that I was feeling the, the symptoms of a stroke. And I don't think it was a heart attack. It's one of the two. But uh, I was more in shock. But on the same breath, humbled to take accountability of what got me there. And um, two weeks ago, I had, a, I had another episode um, where my body was saying something like keep sweat, something just ain't right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we tend to put our pride and ego in front of our common sense. And we put ourselves in undue risk, unnecessary risk. Because we're smart people, we're intelligent, we live in the technological age that pretty much just a drop, a swipe, a click, you can pretty much find anything you need. You know, not to be sarcastic, you can easily find that sacred scripture and in the same breath, find that porno link. It's there. All that's required is that you have just an inkling of what motivates you to search. So, like I said, in two hours, I'm going to be sitting in an office and they're going to tell me, hey, um, this is your options. They're going to tell me if the reality is they're going to have to crack my chest open. Um, I don't know. I'm not trying to get nervous. I'm, I'm, because I also know that at the end of the day, God's got me. God's got me. But I also understand that if that should come to pass, there is going to be a cause and effect because of it, because of recovery. You know, and anybody that knows me, they know that I kind of have the behavior of like a jack racket a jack rabbit you know no i i i'm patient and calm when needed but i've always been the type of person that i've always questioned through optimism why things are the way they are but more importantly um it's gotten real <laughs> it's gotten real real um, I mean I've got I meet with the ortho, ortho, orthotropic surgeon, surgeon today and and then I meet with a cardiologist tomorrow what's the point of all this what's the point point is, sometimes when you think you got to figure it out, you don't have a clue. And you have to come to a point of acceptance that, hey, you know, because of being misinformed, because of willful denial, as well as you got to put your 
you got to put yourself in there because it would not occur if you wasn't there. The effects. They're all. There's repercussions for all your choices that you make. And. Um, you know, things have gotten. More. Clear for me. Um, it does not move my faith. I know that there's a reason for everything. For everything. And, um, you know, one of the things, mm, one of the things that has been placed on my heart is the fact that when I got here, you know, anybody knows me, no pun intended, they know that I've always been a big hearted person. You know, I would, you know, if warranted, because my discernment is pretty sharp. I can read you before you say anything. I feel it. your energy. I know. So I'm going to take the steps to protect myself without ridicule, without bias. You know, I used to always, I tell people that know me, tell on yourself. You ain't got to say it. Your actions will speak it. So put this in perspective. You know, we're still dealing with COVID. And you hear about people that are diagnosed usually when they succumb to that ailment it's always secondary it's always it's always a linchpin that challenges the mortality of the person. That's why when you think about, think back 20 plus years for those who can't, you remember when people were banging a gong about autoimmune disease. And it was always, it wasn't the autoimmune disease per se that challenged their mortality. It was the secondary issue that was the culprit. So what has that done for me? Whatever they tell me, I'm going to do without unconditional submission. Now, I know some of y'all are going to be like, Gerald, you just went over to your kitchen and I saw some pork chops with some barbecue sauce on there. But you got you got a heart you got a heart issue. You gotta cut that out. Well, even the most high had a last supper, didn't he? So now I always thought that my um what I you know my health regiment or the philosophy of thereof was pretty decent. I mean I was never the type of person that um, you know, I'm eating processed foods on a regular basis, but the downside was I would go through the, like these binge like phases like, well, you know what? I haven't had this in a long time, so I'm going to eat it. I'm that's, you know, that like a craving, you know, on the flip side, you guys who know me know that I've always been a smoker, you know, learned that have it while I was in the United States Air Force. So I know that's got to go out the window. I already know. You know, I can hear you screaming that through the camera. I, I know. But I'm not going to pass the buck because I own everything that I have done thus far. Because it would not have an effect if you wasn't there. Knowingly or unknowingly of the outcome. So, 
I'm preparing for the worst. Um, but I know change is coming. And more and more because of the fact that the one thing of discovering there's so much I want to do being here, you know, the island's been shut down uh, collectively almost 47 days off and on, off and on to certain certain degrees. This past weekend, they reopened the beaches and the parks and stuff, so people are, are out and about and stuff. Me, I'm laying it low because I also know that anything that just opens, you're going to have a surge, which means the numbers are going to go up. I've always, since they said, hey, you got a social distance, you got to keep your hygiene on point, you got to make sure that your immune system is at its apex. I ain't changed that. I've always been that guy because that's the, some, that's the one thing the media ain't going to tell you. Why is it the media still now after the, what, what we've had over 100,000 uh, loss of life? And not one person, not even a certain general, has said, "Hey, if you're gonna you're gonna do all the things we recommend, what about what you need to do behind closed doors? Staying hydrated, keep your stress level down, keep the vitamins that is needed for the building blocks of your life intact, so that if by chance that there is a possibility you, there's a exposure, you got a better fighting chance, just like someone that has the flu." Or a common code. It's no different in strategy. Just adjustments. Now. Let me throw this out here. Because I know that there are going to be people that. Are going to see this when they do. I'm okay. I love you too. Because I know my mom. You know my mom. Is, mom is mom. And she's going to see this eventually. Or somebody in the family is going to. Hey look. Drew put this out there on, on YouTube. I'm okay. Um, I was, I'm going to call you once I find out everything. I'll call you this weekend. Um, but but more importantly, um, all this has done is change my perspective because here's my big one. You know, everybody has a goal in life. My biggest goal after I have found my norm here because this is only phase one of being here because I'm only going to be here this location for a year. This time next year, God willing, if he deems me to be upright, will be in my home because I'm buying a house. I'm going to be that's that this time next year, I'm buying a house. So I can't allow my health my health to block my direction. But you know what really sits right here above my heart always is the dream that I'm going to try real hard to keep myself strong because every time just thinking about it breaks me is to um, reunite with my kids. And I say plural because, you know, I was always, I know my daughter, Brianna, she's 21, we don't talk. I've been trying for over a decade, you know. And Alex, who I am ever since that very moment that landed me in the hospital um, because that was the day I realized that this young man looks identical to me. I'm looking at my, I'm looking at myself 20, well, it's 20, he's 27 now, but at that time, 26 years prior, I'm looking at myself. But I understand that you have to be respectful. You have to be sensitive because 
this is going to change everybody's dynamic. But just know that everything that I say and everything that I've ever tried to do has come from a um, has come from a pure place, as always. And you know, come on, get it. Um, it's easy to walk the walk and don't mean shit, excuse my French, and you do. Because everybody has a story, and if people knew all that I've gone through, I'm no different than you. But you'd be you would be you would be shocked. You would be shocked. But people want to see what they want to see. And that and and will accept what they want to accept. And that's not my burden. That's not my fight. Because at the end of the day, it, it's about my story. And I just want to do right. I just want to do right. I want to, you know, that's the big thing is I want to be able to afford my offspring the opportunity to have a bond with me. You know, there's no malice. There's never been no malice. You know, look, we've got too many bad examples of people that know things and proverbially take it to the grave. What are people? What about the people who didn't? What about the people that? But see, I'm not trying to turn around and point fingers. But you got a lot of good guys out there that just want to do the right thing. But because of choices, because of fear, because of denial, even deception, you know, they play a heavy part, a heavy a price. And so, you know, since that moment, Because anybody that has been a parent, who is a parent, you know that feeling that you get the first time you look upon your child. It's it's indescribable. It's indescribable, but it's a it's a inner knowing because it's spirit. That's why, historically, it was always the elder that, if there was a child that was born, especially if it was the son, the son would take the child to the, to the eldest female, the grandmother, the mother. And they would look upon that child and they and they would know. They just knew, like, that's you. I get it. That ain't nothing but discernment, but you know your own. You know your own. So not to be winded. Um it's about making the time I have count. And one of the things that I wanted to do um was break some of my insecurities. And one of the things I did was I got this. And because I wanted to know that, you know, when I was in the service, do I have other children out there that I'm not aware of? You know, I discovered I have a son through YouTube. And, you know, it used to be a, a lighthearted joke in, in the service. Like, you know, the, a soldier's worst fear is 
a knock at, a knock at the door, and then that child is on the other side, and there's that awkwardness. But then the million dollar question was, where were you? Why weren't you in my life? And there are no words because you missed out. But on the flip side, what if the variable was you didn't even know that they existed? Now, granted, the time, everything adds up. Timeline adds up. Everything, I'm convinced, he's my son. Don't believe me? His name is Alex McQueen. He's a YouTuber. Just look at his face. Just look at his face. But since that day, with respect, a lot of compassion, and very sensitive, I've tried to reach out since then because I told him, I said, you are, you are the Christmas gift I never got because I always longed to have a son. And, you know, I mean, if I'm going to tell it, I got to tell it all. See, to go back in time, before I joined the, the Air Force, I was involved in a relationship with somebody that I thought was very significant. And she was pregnant. I'd already made the decision to join the Air Force with the intent of, hey, I don't know how we're going to figure it out, but ride or die, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there for you. Because I was always raised through illustrations of you be there for your kids, no matter what. Because I knew how my life played out. And I also understand that your parents don't know it all, but they're trying to protect you from the pitfalls that you can't see or the things they could they may have yet to master and they're trying to protect you. So we have to honor our parents in that regards. Well, with that situation, that relationship, I'm in basic training and I get a letter saying, I don't want to be a rock in your stream. And I made a decision to terminate the pregnancy. And she was showing. I got I got that letter. Do you realize how distraught I was? But I had to push through. Almost two years later, going almost into my second year there, because I was 23, so I was 24. So I was there a full year. And I say about November time frame. Based off the timeline, there was a conception done. And everything matches. And I know you'll say, well, how do you, don't you remember? When you're 23, first of all, when you're in your 20s, you don't know shit. You're only going off of the experience of what you emulate compared to what you know. But when I, now I'm 51, he's 27. You do the math. Have I reached out to, let me backtrack, the first one, through the years I did, I did last year too, because based on the timeline, you would think that would have been, she was already showing, so, so I think that I may have a child out there, and she just said, you know, which was very messed up. Alex reached out to his mother 
She has not responded. Don't know why. The only excuse I can give for that is 27 years ago, you didn't have the internet like that. You relied to an address, a good line of, a good phone number, and you better hope that if, if you're in a relationship, we would always, well, you know, if you need to define me, my mom knows where I am. I always was that, I was always transparent back then. And, but in the, but on the flip side, I was very responsible. So I thought. So anyway, since then I've reached out. He is yet to respond. Um, but I believe in my heart and heart, he reads everything that I, that I convey. And I know that he knows who I am. And this is no discredit, this is no discredit to his dad and his mother. But we, I believe that we deserve, we all need to deserve to know the truth. Because the one thing that the Most High has always said, the truth will set you free. And I stand on that. Because I, it makes me think that if I knew that I had a child in the world, you realize how much that would have changed the trajectory of my life? Do you realize that? You know, I, I conveyed that to my daughter, my baby girl, and I'm, I'm like, because they are literally seven years apart. She's born May 21st. He's born June, no, July 22nd. No, June 22nd. No, July, because he's a cancer. See the sequential numbers, 21, 22. But um, that's, that's my motivation, fam. Live my best life. Also, the fact that this will let me know because, you know, we live in an era where, you know, sometimes there are things out there that our elders may have had a hard time to convey. Well, guess what? Throw it on the DNA. The DNA will let you know who you are, where you stand. 